Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota here in the US, and I am so sorry that I'm late today. We had some internet connection issues, so uh, <laughs> that always, that happens, right? Anyways, I'm glad if you're joining me, thank you so much. I am going to share with you a fun 3D idea today. It's actually called a candy dispenser. Uh, one of my friends, Joy, uh, alerted me to this idea. She sent me an email with a link to someone's blog and said, can you please show me how to make this? And so I did my math. <laughs> I love doing math and it's so super, super easy to do this project. So super easy. So um, that's called super when you say so super. <laughs> so thank you everybody. Okay, it is Wednesday, June 4th, or I'm sorry, June 24th at 11 a.m. Central Time. And we are going to share the Whale of a Time candy dispenser with you today. Before I begin, I wanna make sure that you know uh, that you can get in on a prize drawing at the end of this video. So if you are watching and you comment, your comment gets you an automatic entry. So comment away, tell me where you're from, um, tell me what the weather is like, <laughs> tell me how long you've been a crafter. That's a new one, right? Have I asked you guys that before? Some of you um, have done paper crafting longer than me. I've been doing it for about 21 years now. So, well, officially. I've always, like when I was little, I used to hand draw um, greeting cards for my grandparents and, and I, I did a lot of art. But anyways, paper crafting with Stampin' Up! stuff, about 21 years. So I'd love to hear that from you. I'm very interested. Also, if you share this, this broadcast, you share this video with your friends, family, whatever, um, and then mention that you shared, that's really nice too. And you get an entry because you mentioned that you shared. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Okay, let's go to our computer. I wanna make sure, um, hang on a minute, we've got a little issue here. So it said something was quitting. It doesn't show that it's, <laughs> we're having all kinds of fun internet issues today. I'm just going to ignore that message and pretend like my computer is trying to confuse me, right? How does that sound? So let's see if we can establish that connection again. I'm going to hang on a minute, you guys. I have to do something here because it looks like, let's see if I click that off. Oh, wait, I might. <laughs> okay, why is it? Now? Oh, there we go. It's showing it now. Seriously, we are going to have like all kinds of fun internet issues today. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Hopefully not. Think good thoughts my way, everyone. Okay, so these are the uh, measurements and the supplies that you would need if you wanted to make the three of the projects that I'm showing you today. There's a fourth one that I added in because it's so super cute and it uses the bundle for um, the whale suite of products. So I use the punch on that fourth one. I'll show you the, that one at the end. Anyways, I didn't add that information in here, but for the other three, I have all the um, tools and stuff like that. We all actually know. There's one other thing that I forgot to put in there and that was the pool party cardstock, but that doesn't matter. The main project is here. It's on this list and I would love for you to look at that. If you wanna take a screenshot, you can. Um, the measurements, we're gonna go beyond. So this particular thing right here where it says whisper white thick cardstock, the eight and a half by nine, we're going beyond that. So don't just copy the measurements, but you gotta watch the video. It's too hard to explain in writing, which is why I'm doing a video. So um, make sure you stick with me and then visit back on Saturday on my blog, which I forgot to put up there so you can see where I'm from. Stampyourartout.com. Visit back to me on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday. What would that be? J June 27th. And I will have these measurements, these supplies, the link to the video there so that you can get all of this information again if you need to. So on that note, let's go to the desktop and see what we have before us. We have these beautiful papers. This paper is from the Whale of a Time Suite. Is it, I think it's called Whale of a Time Suite. So I have almost all the papers in the stack, but I have been creating, some of you that follow my blog or you watch my YouTube videos or Facebook Live videos, you know that I've been creating with this stuff <clears throat> because it is super awesome. It's a wonderful suite of products. So you have all of these beautiful papers in here. They're six by six papers. Um, and they're double-sided. So let me show you the other sides of them. 
So these are the other sides here. Got some fishies and nets and um, waves and algae, <laughs> seaweed, whales, turtles. They're so cute. And these are a couple cards that I made recently using th this paper. This paper I used up, so I no longer have that six by six piece. This is almost the full six by six piece here, so you can see it. And this one I also used up. You don't see the flip side of it. I'm so sorry about that, but I used up that whole entire um, amount of that paper because I just loved it so much. Uh, that is a recent Facebook Live, by the way, so you can search for that. That is the three panel scenery Z fold card. Okay, so we're gonna be using this piece today. I thought that would be a fun one. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see things a little bit closer, especially because we're gonna be doing some measurements. So, all right, so let's set that one aside. Actually, let's, yeah, no, let's set that one aside. Let's cut the base first. You know what? I think I wanna do some embellishments first. Um, I think I'm gonna do that first because then those things will be ready to go when it's time for us to put the box together. So the first embellishment, I'm not going to demonstrate for you. We are going to get a new, um, a new die cutting embossing machine. So dies, which look like this, and embossing folders we have and things like that, you'll be able to use these with a new stamp and cut emboss machine that's coming out September 1st. To demonstrators, August 4th. We can pre-order so um so this is an item that i cut using our silver foil paper and you can see you just put it right over the paper you're going to crank it through the machine and what it does is these little areas here cut out the paper it's like a fancy punch so that's how i got that look you can see from this set of dies this is the dies called stitch stars um, you can get all kinds of fun goodies from that. So this piece we'll be using, and you can see that there are little stars that probably got punched out after I die cut it, and I've got a couple of those here, like that. So we'll be using those. I'm gonna set those up here. Um, and then another thought is, let's go ahead and cut a strip from this piece. Actually, let's cut our base first. Let's cut that to eight and a half by nine. Then we'll be ready for it. So this piece is already eight and a half inches in this direction. This direction, it's 11 inches, so we're cutting off two inches. Um, I'm bringing it actually to the nine inch mark, and we're gonna trim it right here. So this piece we can use for the next step. I'm just gonna cut a strip that is three, three quarters of an inch wide. So I use the measurements on this side of my trimmer and if I zoom in, you can see a little bit better here. So that's where the three quarter inch mark is. And I used it on that side because I find it's easier to hold on the left side than holding it over here. But you could use either side of that channel. So I've got a three quarter inch wide strip of Whisper White Thick card stuff. We'll set this over here for now and let's play around with this. This is another embellishment option that you could have for the end result okay so again i'm kind of starting at the end with some of this because once we're done with this you're going to want to see all the samples okay so this is a punch that we have it's called what is it called take your pick no i'm sorry this is not take your pick this is called <laughs> i don't see it on my list i know i put it on here though oh lovely labels it has pick in it lovely labels pick a punch and we're going to position it into this channel. You can see you could have a, an inch wide paper. You could have three quarters of an inch. You can even have a half of, half of an inch um, wide paper and it will fit in the channel. You flip the punch upside down. You make sure that it looks centered. You punch it and you've got that fancy little end. Okay, so next we can stamp. I'm gonna bring in the coordinating stamp that we're gonna use. Um, this stamp set I actually don't use on one of my boxes. I only use the designer paper. Um, but yes, here's the stamp set that goes along with that suite. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see the whole thing. This is called Whale Done. And it's got some fun, like five different sentiments in here and then some images that coordinate with the designer paper. So I'm gonna take the one out that says, hoping all your birthday fishes come true. Because if you remember the paper, that paper has fishes on it. So that would be just totally appropriate, right? 
So hoping you're, hoping you're what? Hoping you're, <laughs> there it is. Hoping all your birthday fishes come true. Once I ink it up, I'll be able to read it better. So we're gonna grab the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. By the way, if you're in North America, this ink has been unavailable for quite a while because of the pandemic and shipping issues and stuff. But supposedly it's coming back the end of the month, beginning of July time. So hang on if you're wanting this ink. So we're gonna stamp that pretty close to this fun end here. And then we'll just trim up with our scissors, called a paper snips. We're gonna trim about a half of an inch away. And I'm trimming just with the scissors because it doesn't have to be fancy. So we're just gonna trim like that. And then we're gonna estimate the middle area. And again, this does not have to be exact either. But I'm gonna show you how you can get a fun little banner look. So I just kind of cut about a fourth of an inch in. And then I cut from the corner to the end of that cut. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And that's how you can get that fun little flag look on the end, okay? All right, so that's almost ready to go for an optional embellishment. The only other thing I want to make sure I have with that is uh, my bone folder. I've got so much junk on this table, you guys. <laughs> so we're gonna go like that, and then we're gonna curl it, and I think I'm gonna add a rhinestone. I started grabbing this and I was like, do I? Yeah, I do. So let's grab a rhinestone and, oops, there we go. And we're gonna set a medium sized one right in this spot here. This is just a helpful tool. It's called the take your pick tool. Um, this is a great tool for poking and lifting at things. Um, if you wanna make a hole, the other side of this has a spatula kind of thing for lifting scraping adhesive away or whatever. This end has um, a little gummy thing that helps to pick up like sequins or small bits of paper. And then you can get, um, well here, I'll show you the other thing that comes with it. So there's another end that comes with it and it's a stylus and it has two different sizes and that can be inserted into the same end as the pokey end. And then this is an attachment that you can get separately. It actually comes with a foam little mat too for helping to remove insides of dyes. So this dye here, it's very detailed. So I would stick it on that foam mat and then with the dye still on it, I would brush across and it would help to loosen a lot of those extra little pieces. So that is the take your pick tool. I think that's all we're gonna see of that take your pick tool today. Okay, so here we go. So we have our embellishment set off to the side. We're gonna start cutting the box. All right, let's zoom that way. Okay, so here's our paper. Our paper is eight and a half by nine. And you can see when I turn it in two different directions, which direction is taller and which direction is shorter. They're only off by a half of an inch. So you wanna make sure that you're, cut, you're doing your cutting and scoring in the right direction, okay? Always pay attention to that. So we're gonna start um, doing our scoring parallel to the long side. So this is the long side here. We're gonna lift up the arm of our trimmer and use only our scoring blade for now. That's the light gray one. And we're positioning it at a half of an inch. So, and I'm doing that on this side of the trimmer, again, because I find it's easier. I'm gonna get that paper out of here for now. I find it's easier to do those smaller measurements on this side. So starting out, we're gonna score at a half of an inch. We've just placed a crease in there. You can see that, I think. Now we're gonna flip it around and we'll continue doing our scoring. So it's if we started at a half of an inch and now we're gonna to move to two and a half inches. And then we're gonna to move to four and a half inches. And then we're gonna to move to extending the arm on your trimmer six and a half inches, okay? All right, so those are the measurements that are parallel to the long side for scoring. Now we're gonna rotate this. We're gonna rotate it so that we're just turning it this direction and we're gonna score again a half of an inch in, okay? Let's flip it around and continue scoring from there. So a half of an inch, one and a half inches, Then we're gonna to go to three and a half inches. 
Then we're gonna go to six and a half inches. Now, so far, all these measurements are on that Word document that I showed you on my computer, okay? The last one, let's see, we had six and a half and then one more, um, and that is at eight and a half inches. Oops, you can't see that one. It's over there, eight and a half inches, okay? Which actually puts another half inch section up here, by the way. Don't get confused though, there's a half inch section here and here. This one's gonna be considered the bottom of the paper because we started there. So now we're gonna rotate again and we're gonna do some trimming now, okay? I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see even more of the paper. And we're going to turn it, and I wanna make sure I'm doing this right, hang on. Um, then cut parallel to short side. Okay, so we're gonna stay on the short side here. I'm gonna rotate my pattern. I'm gonna show you the pattern in a minute, but it's gonna make more sense um, after I've cut this piece into the right, uh, right size and before I show it to you. Okay, so now we're going to cut parallel to the short side. So we've got it positioned so that we're going parallel to the short side and we're gonna cut at seven inches. So we're gonna move it back and we're only gonna cut in a few spots. So remember the score line was at six and a half. What we're doing is we're making tabs. So we're just going to cut from this score line here down and from this score line up. So we're gonna start our trimming blade right there and score, or cut down. Did I say score, I meant cut. And then we're gonna cut here and up. So what we've got here, you can see, is we've got a section here that's going to establish some little tabs on our box for when we fold it all together, okay? So that's at seven inches. Now, if you're watching this along with me, say after, like the recording, um, it's, it's gonna be so easy. <laughs> you guys, it's gonna be fun. Okay, we can do it. Now we're gonna move to four and a half inches. It might be hard to understand it now, but if you're doing it along with me, it's gonna make sense. So we're gonna move to four and a half inches, and four and a half does not have a score line yet either. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start at this score line that's going this direction, and we're gonna cut up and away. So at four and a half inches, cut up and away. Then we're gonna to move to three inches, and three inches did not have a score line either. We had it at three and a half, which is just beyond. So what we're doing is we're doing tabs on the other side. And this is gonna be similar to the one we first cut over here. So it's gonna start on this score line, the one going this way, and cut down. And then we're gonna to go to this one here, and we're gonna cut up and away. Okay, um, the next one is at one and a half, which we did score. That one's already in here. We have a score line there. And we're gonna start where we did just on the last one here. So it's gonna be the same as this one and this one. Cut here and down and cut here and up. And then we're gonna move to six and a half inches. And I know this sounds weird, but we're moving back in to six and a half inches, because it's just gonna make sense. Um, and we're going to cut, that one has a score line by the way, and we're gonna cut from this spot on up. Right there. Okay, now we have to cut in the other direction. <laughs> and then we're almost ready to do some hand cutting with our scissors, okay, to do the fine points of it. So we're gonna rotate it again, and we're gonna rotate it in this direction, and we're going to cut at six and a half inches. So here's the six and a half inch mark, and you can see this is where our score line came in, six and a half. We're gonna cut from this point up, and this point, um, oopsie, sorry, this point down to here. We're not gonna cut beyond, because we wanna keep a little tab down here. So we're gonna start here where this, actually where the six, uh, six and a half inch mark went across this way actually. So we're, cut, we're starting here where that score line is. And we're cutting up and away, we're lifting it, and we're moving down to this next horizontal score line which is here. We're cutting down to the one and a half inch mark here. Okay, now we're gonna move it. We're gonna bring it to the four and a half inch mark 
Some of your pieces might start to fall out. You'll see that happened here, okay? That's okay, don't worry about it. Um, try to just keep it together as you cut here. It's gonna be easier than doing it all with your hand and your scissors. So with the four and a half inch mark, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start here, cut up, bring it down to that score line, cut down to that one and a half inch mark up here. Okay, and then we're gonna bring it to the two and a half inch mark carefully because this is where this little section will want to come out and we don't want it to yet because we want to help with our measurements. So keep that section in there. Two and a half is where we had that score line. So we're going to start um, at this mark here where this cut is, cut down. We're going to start here and we're going to cut up and then we can get rid of the trimmer for a while. Okay, so watch what happens. This is what we have now. Oops, come on out of there. Okay, this is the base of our box. All of these things can get pushed aside. We don't need them. And we're gonna grab our ruler and a pencil. And we're gonna make two other little marks. So we have a little spot here where these score lines intersect. And we have a little spot here. We're gonna connect this spot with this corner and this spot with this corner. And if you, if you, you know, do it dark with your pencil, you can always erase, but I wouldn't do it too dark because <laughs> it makes it harder to erase. Or you can just leave it as is because this is a, a flap that actually is gonna go into your box. You're not gonna see much of it. All right, can you see that? The little score, the little marks there? It's time to cut with our scissors. Let me show you this though, side by side. So here is what we're doing. And this image will be on my blog on Saturday. So you can also just like use that as a visual to help you out, okay? So this is what we're doing with it. So I'm gonna keep that there and you can use it as a guide as we go. We're gonna miter cut that little tab and then we're gonna go from there and just follow the pencil line and cut out. Same thing here, follow the pencil line and cut out. And now we have that spot down there done, okay? Next, you can see there's two tabs here and two tabs here. We're gonna miter cut, angle cut, whatever you wanna call it, to kind of establish some little tabs there, just like on a box, on any box, you typically have tabbed pieces that help to assemble the box. If you don't have them tabbed, sometimes things are too sharp. Let's turn this around. We'll also turn that around so you can follow along with me. And we're gonna cut here and here and here. And by the way, those of you that are watching me for the first time, <laughs> I'm very bad at reading comments as we go. I rarely comment from the comments, so just know that if I'm not catching your comment, I will read it within the few days following this video. If you have something pressing, message me, um, question that sort of thing. Okay, so this one here, we just angle cut up. Sometimes I catch them though, but I'm so into this right now, I can't even focus on your comments. <laughs> All right, what else? We have this one, this little tab. So, and you know that they're tabs because, and it's hard to see on video, but there are score lines there, so. Okay, so that's, that's gonna guide you when you're cutting. So again, this will be on a photograph on my blog, so that will help you out. We're gonna move that out of the way. We're gonna come in and we're gonna do one little piece of tape. We're gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the tear and tape adhesive for that. It's one of my favorites. I have not gotten to know the Seal Plus much yet, so I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be strong enough for Boxes, I've heard it is. I've heard that it is, but I haven't played around with it yet. So I'm going with an adhesive that we still carry that I know is tried and true. All right, so there is that. All I had to do was put a little adhesive there. That's it. The rest of the box holds itself together, okay? Um, and all those scraps, I saw Angela made a comment about scraps. You can take those pieces and you could use them for something else. So don't throw them away. Um, you may be able to take like 
something like this and do a sentiment on it, punch it out and stick it on the front of your box. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're going to cut our designer paper and our designer paper pieces are gonna go inside these panels. So if you look at this piece here, this is kind of going the opposite way, but it shows you measurements of the sections. So we have a two by two section on the top and bottom of the box. So two by two and two by two. We have two by three on three sides of it. And then when we put the box together, we're actually gonna have a two by one and a two by two here. So all of those pieces, when you look at them all together, can easily come out of a six by six piece of paper. Now I wouldn't recommend cutting them right to those sizes though, because that's edge to edge on the box. And you sometimes wanna have a little leeway just in case you made a 16th of an inch measurement off or something like that. So thanks, Nancy. She goes, I'd rather you demonstrate rather than answering the questions. Me too, I just love getting into this, but thank you for reassuring me that that was okay. Um, so when you cut these pieces that we're gonna that are gonna go in here, make sure that they're just slightly smaller. You could do them a quarter of an inch smaller. So this, instead of being two inches across, would be one and three quarter inches across. Or you can make them um, a little bit bigger than that. And I'm gonna go with the eighth inch measurements today because you guys know I love math. So we're gonna go with one and seven eighths. That's gonna be a little bit bigger. Okay. So here we go. I'm imagining these as the sections on the box. So we're gonna go to, instead of doing two inches, and instead of doing one and three quarter inches, we're gonna go right in between there. And that looks like that on your, on your ruler, on your cutter, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and cut right there, and we're gonna do three strips. We're gonna cut that one, we're gonna cut this one and I'm actually gonna cut this so that we have we can see a little bit more of the fishies because you're gonna have some extra no matter what and I sort of liked that look going through here sorry that's really close now isn't it <laughs> okay so now that we've zoomed back out now we want to figure out what we're gonna have on the front of our box and what we're gonna have on the sides this one would be a really good side one. I don't know if I'd necessarily want it on the front because it's very distracting, but um, let's go ahead and put that on the side of our box. So instead of three inches, um, let's see here. I might put one of these on the bottom too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put the, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Okay, I know it's kind of like you have to visualize the whole thing. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this section here and it's almost to three inches, but it's an eighth of an inch less, so it's one or two and seven eighths. We're gonna put that on one side. We're gonna put this one on the um, bottom front. So that one actually has to be cut just under an inch, and we're gonna cut it to seven eighths of an inch. So that one's gonna sit here on our box. Let me move that down a little bit so you can see it better. And then we want another piece that's on top of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim an eighth of an inch out of there. I know that seems weird, but I want it to flow really well with the side of the box. So now I'm coming back in and I'm cutting a almost two inch piece. And that's gonna be this one. So you can see that gap between there makes sense now, right? Because we're gonna have a gap there. Okay, and then the other side of the box, we're gonna do at almost three, so two and seven eighths. And that's gonna go over here. Now we need one for the back of the box and the top and the bottom. The top, or the bottom is optional, but um, I think it's kind of fun to have, you know, the, the look throughout. So let's go ahead and put this one on the back, and we wanna make sure it's the same size, so two and seven eighths. So we just have one that's not so important on the back of the box. Um, on the front, let's put these little fishies. So let's do maybe the smaller ones. I'm sorry, on the top. So one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths is gonna go on the top of the box. That's gonna look cute, isn't it? And then the bottom of the box, just because, we'll do another square. And then we will have filled up all of the sections of the box. So when we bring this back over here, 
you can see that those are where those pieces are going to go. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and um, score on the score lines. And what you have to do, because you don't want any of your pieces to be upside down, especially if they have a direction like this, what you have to do is kind of fold it as you go. Okay, so we're gonna kind of collapse it together to see what it's gonna look like. This is what the box is gonna look like eventually. So this is the front, and that's gonna get this piece here, and this is also the front. So that's gonna get that piece. So when we bring it out, these fish look at, um, actually upside down to us, don't they? And this one does not. So be aware of that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna grab our adhesive. This is our Snail Plus. I'm um, still learning how to use this, I'm sorry, not Snail Plus, Seal Plus. I'm still learning how to use the regular seal. I've been, I've been having some difficulty learning it and I wanna learn it fast so I can teach it to you guys. Um, but yeah, it's a different kind of tape than the Snail was. So uh, right now I'm using the Seal Plus because it works just fine for me. <laughs> so you run it and you run it and it's, it's got these tiny little um, strips of adhesive on them. You can kind of see that in the light. So that one's going to go upright in this section. Okay, so now when we bring this box together again, you can see how those are going to come together. So this is the one that's going to confuse you. <laughs> All right, now that we've got that set up, this is upright on our box, and these pieces are going to go ahead and connect like that. So let's go ahead and put the seal plus on there. See, I, I break the connection. I'm learning though, you guys, I'm learning. It's a new product, just came out. And it's super strong, I will agree. Yes, super strong. This one's gonna go on the other side. So we'll lay our tape down. Supposedly you don't have to do any check marks, but I'm so used to doing check marks with fast fuse adhesive that um, it's just kind of a habit. But yeah, you run it, it's supposed to be a light touch, pull, and then you're supposed to just be able to lift it. But you know, okay, so now I'm gonna have issues with the Seal Plus on camera. That's fun. <laughs> what I did is I just advanced it a little bit with my finger. Okay, so this will go here on the back, and then we'll do one on the top. Let's see how that one's going to go. If this is going to be the top of our box, I want the fish to be going this way. So like that. And then this one is non-directional, so it doesn't matter to me how that one goes on. And we'll just stick that on the base of our box. Okay, now you're going to bring this arm in and it's already got, oh, we put the adhesive on the wrong side. That's okay. Oh, that's because I was gonna do it on, um, I was gonna put the panels on this side instead. We can leave that there, or do you know that um, tear and tape adhesive is easy to roll off? If it's, not, if it's not stuck on there right away, it's easy to roll off. I mean, if you, I guess what I should say is if it hasn't been on there for a while, it can be easy to roll off. So there, we've removed it. Now we're gonna put tear and tape right here don't tell anyone I'm having adhesive issues today. It's embarrassing. <laughs> All right, that goes there. And we'll peel off the release paper. And we're just gonna collapse the box down like that. When you, when you put together a box flat, it makes the pieces go in a more exact connection than if you were to try to do it like this and holding it up, it's, it's much harder. So you just flatten this piece this way this piece this way. We're gonna take our bone folder. We're gonna to rub to burnish it, make sure that that adhesive is established. And then you can also check it to make sure it folds in both directions really well. Okay, this we can connect easily. We've got our tabs already set up. So that's the top of the box. The bottom of the box is a little bit tougher, but you're gonna bring those two tabs in. These two little arms are gonna get tucked inside the box and they're gonna to help to hold the dispenser area of the tape. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Linda says, we've all done that at one time or another, put the tape on the wrong side. 
So when you um, put these arms in like this, you kind of have to, oh, sorry. You kind of have to fold them together as if they're hugging themselves. And then you lift this up and you release them so that they're going into the box. I'm gonna show you that again. So fold them up onto each other, come up flat, bring it up and release them into the box. Okay, so now we have those in there. And you can see when this opens up, it holds, it catches on itself. Is this cool or what? It catches on itself and it doesn't allow to it for it to open too much. And then this tab can just get tucked in like that when you want it closed. You can open the box from the top. You can make sure that everything's in there nice and straight. You can see all the tabs are in there. And then you can fill it with candy. Woohoo! So I'm gonna grab a bunch of this candy. Oops. M&Ms are great. Anything that's not wet, you know, kind of has a hard candy shell on it would work well. Um, this is for my kids, so I'm using my hands. If I was giving it to somebody else, I would be doing it with a scooper. But you can fill it up with candy. You can close the tab on top. And then we can decorate it. This is one way to decorate, by putting a glue dot and a dimensional on the back and just kind of sticking it on there for someone's birthday. Let's zoom in on that so you can see it better. Is that cute? Hoping all your fish, your birthday fishes come true and then they just open it up and all that candy comes pouring out. Or you could take and you can put these on there. And I'm gonna actually do these stars right now for you. So we're gonna grab a few other materials that I haven't shown you yet. So I didn't show you these yet. And what else have I not shown you? I guess I haven't shown you these, but I mentioned them. So that would connect, the glue dots and the dimensional would connect this. But we're gonna put the stars on because I want this to be kind of 4th of July-ish. So every year, my family gets together at the cabin, which is my mom and dad's lake place um, that they've retired to. A lot of you that watch my videos know that they live on a lake in northern Minnesota. It's beautiful there. And it's been a tradition since I was a, a young kid, like five years old. And we've been celebrating 4th of July up there every single year. There's years where, you know, a few of us has, have missed, um, but it was really hard this year to accept the fact that we wouldn't be able to go up there. So when I put this on here, by the way, I'm gonna put it on, I think I'm gonna trim this first. I'm gonna trim some stars out. I honestly have not planned this yet. There, now I have two separate pieces. Maybe I'll put that one on this way. Okay, so I know that this is not gonna get any glue, so I'm gonna leave glue off of there. And I'm just gonna put it on my silicone sheet here and just start sponging and not move this piece. This is actually my favorite way to put adhesive on these really delicate pieces now because um, I never think to put an adhesive sheet on the back of something before I die cut. <laughs> So it's quick and it's easy. So we've got some cute stars on there. This piece can go across the top. Well, actually it's gonna cover up the fishes, so maybe we don't wanna put it across the top. Maybe we just need that piece. I think that's it. We'll stick some glue dots on here. So we'll just put a star on top of a glue dot and a star on top of a glue dot, like that. So yeah, so because it's a lake, place. Um, I always associate the 4th of July with lake images, water images, and this totally just screams 4th of July to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I want that piece there. <laughs> Hang on. I think I'm going to put it on the top. Twist it and then you can remove it. There we go. We're going to set that one over here maybe. And then we'll put some rhinestones on because we've got to have glitter. Rachel has to have glitter. Something glittery. We'll put that there. We'll put this one, I think, I don't know, maybe here, right in that little loop-de-loop. -loop. And another one, maybe here. There we go. <laughs> so wouldn't this be fun if you're getting together with people for the holidays to just make these cute little boxes? They can open it up from, oopsie, I think they actually have to get their hands on the inside. It's not like, you know, a professional box, but you just kind of have to get that started there. So once you have that started, and you can pull it out, 
Then they've got all their candy ready to go for the 4th of July. Yes, the rhinestones do kind of look like bubbles, don't they? And then they can just tuck that back in. So that's one of them. Oh, before I move on and show you the rest, uh, a little tip, get all the adhesive off your sponge, wash it with warm water to get any other adhesive out of it, and then take packing tape. And I've already got, oh, I guess it's not completely dry yet, but just take packing tape and just start um, peeling up all the dried adhesive and it's a super quick, easy way. Super quick, easy way to clean it off. All right, so here's another one. So again, remember the little flag that I made? So I did that with the longer sentiment from that kit. <clears throat> my love is bigger. My love for you is bigger than the ocean. That's super cute, isn't it? It's using the one with has, that has the little crabs on it. And this is a pool party cardstock face. Then this one used the stars again from that um, set of star dies and lots of rhinestones. I kind of went crazy. I even handpicked <laughs> the red, blue, and chocolate M&Ms from my bag because I wanted only 4th of July in there. Silly, silly me. And, and look at this too. You'd think that you'd need adhesive on the bottom, but you don't. Those tabs just stay in. It's crazy. And here's another box. This one's using the punch that coordinates with that bundle. So when you get this stamp set, it's wise to buy the punch with it. It's a bundle and you save 10%. And you can make really cute whales. Um, isn't this box fun? I've even got some of that black glittered organdy ribbon on there. So, so yeah, fun times. I hope that you enjoyed these little candy dispenser boxes. Um, this is a, a great bundle to apply to so many different occasions, but you could totally uh, take and use this dispenser for so many different occasions too. You could use it for, um, you could use it for like Christmas time or Easter or you know a certain holiday or whatever. So you would actually have a theme, or maybe you're gonna have little party favors at your kid's birthday or something. So lots of different themes that you could do with this box. The main idea of this video is to show you how to do the box, but yes, you could totally use the whale. Um, suite of products. In fact, I'm going to show it to you right now on the computer. So we'll just bring it over to, let's make sure we're established here. Oh, it's, it's going to do some silly things here. We're having internet issues with my computer today. This is not good. Watch what happens. See, it's bringing you to my measurements, even though my measurements aren't on there anymore on my computer. <laughs> Whoops. Um, what if I connect again. Will that work? Let's try. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to, you guys are, might have to just trust me and believe that I'm picking the right people when we do our, here, let's try turning this off and then turning it on again. There, now it worked. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the Whale of Time Suite. We just won't leave the computer for a while, okay? So this is the Whale of, Whale of a Time Suite. Um, if you wanted a whole bunch of stuff in that suite, you can order it all at once. But yes, here's the bundle where you save 10%. There's paper, there's sequins, there's ribbon, there's an embossing folder that I have yet to use. This is the website. Um, oh, sorry. This is the website where Joy um, gave me a link to to get this candy dispenser idea. It's from a gal named um, Kelly Ratzlaff. Uh, I think that's how you say her name. But this blog post was from 2013, and I don't think it's a live blog anymore. So there was no way of reaching out to her to get her measurements, so I just came up with them on my own. But I will put that link into the description of this video. This machine is coming soon. So I wanted you to be aware of that. Um, for those of you that don't have a die cutting machine, so you can do that fun, you know, cutting out stars and stuff like that. Just know that Stampin' Up! is going to be releasing this on September 1st uh, for everybody, August 4th for demonstrators. And it's called the Stamp and Cut and Emboss. You can see there's a large one and there's a smaller one. The mini is not available yet. Again, pandemic issues, shipping, all that kind of stuff. But we know that this larger one will be available soon. So keep that in mind. 
Um, especially if you are planning to sign up to get the awesome demonstrator starter kit this month. So through the end of June, you can add an extra bundle to your starter kit for free. It could be the whale bundle with the punch, right? The stamp set and punch. Anyways, you add that into your starter kit and then you will be able to pre-order this early as well on August 4th. Um, I have a link to signing up to getting the starter kit in my description, I believe. If not, you can go to stampyourartout.com and click on join the fun. Okay, so um, if you want to take advantage of that deal, make sure that you do it by the end of June. The starter kit deal only lasts through the end of June. And one more thing that's awesome about that is if you sign up today, you get to see the new upcoming August through December catalog because it's going live in just a few hours on the demonstrator side of the website for us to peek at. Yay! So super fun. Let's go back to our desk and we're going to pull out the prizes that you can choose from if your name is drawn today. And then we'll show you the prizes from last week so that we can um, congratulate the people who are picked for that. So these are the prize choices you have. They are unused stamp sets. Um, all of these are retired now but they are unused and we're gonna have three winners overall, one today, two next week. Um, so keep commenting throughout the week if you're on YouTube or Facebook and you get entered. And then you get to choose. Even if you're the last person drawn, you still will have a choice of two. Two different sets, right? Okay, so um, we'll draw that winner in just a second. These are the prizes for last week. And we have, where's my other one? Here it is. These are the prizes from last week, and we've already got the winners uh, pulled up from that, so let's see if this will work for me again. Going to the computer. Let's see, having computer issues today. So congratulations to Susan and Cynthia, the YouTube winner and Facebook uh, winner from the past video when we um, showed how to do those lovely fruit cards, 45 cards from one kit. That was fun. So congratulations to the two of you. And now let's go back to um, the, woo, da, da, da. here we go. We're gonna go to my Facebook page. Um, this is where you're at if you're on Facebook, Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel. And we're gonna click on videos now, so get in your last comments. <laughs> here we go. This is another long video today, you guys. Holy cow, I'm gonna have to make next week shorter. Sorry about that. Let's grab the link for this video that's going live right now and bring it into our random comment picker site. Please don't have any issues, site. <laughs> How many people? We have 177 of you who have commented during this video. Thank you so much for commenting. I've clicked the start button and the winner is going to be, who is it? Bridget Wells Clomp, you get to choose from one of those four stamp sets that I shared. So congratulations to you. I'm so excited. It's so, fun, so much fun to draw winners. And I appreciate all of you so much for watching and commenting on my videos. Um, it really makes me feel like I'm doing a class with people rather than with nobody. Because <laughs> it sometimes seems weird when you're doing this in, in your craft room and you're just talking to a screen. Of course, I see your comments, but it's so much better when we can interact with each other. So thank you so much for being live with me. Thank you for commenting afterwards. I hope you had a great time. Next week is July 1st. So if you have not gotten that ornate bundle of 90 tutorials for free just by placing an order, um, that is the host code that you would need. You just place a host code in your order when you order from me at stampyourartout.com and then you can get that bundle for free. You have until the end of June, which is Tuesday of next week. So Wednesday when I see you on July 1st, I'll have a whole new project for you, a whole new idea. I hope that you come back and join, join me at 11 a.m. Central Time here on my Facebook page. Thank you, everybody. All right. Take care. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.